Okay, here we're going to talk about a specific concept in the molecules to metabolism unit that kind of gives us an idea about how new evidence or new findings or new techniques and technologies can help us to update our scientific worldview. And so this is an interesting molecule to talk about with this respect here, something called the vital force. This is actually the structure for urea. And so here there's a little guy who's holding, this is probably not urine, but it looks like urine. So let's just pretend like it's urine. And that's pretty awesome. Urine in a little vial. So urea is a byproduct of metabolism. So when we are eating and we're taking in carbohydrates and we're eating our fats, we're eating our proteins from a lot of the meat, um, the urine that we produce is actually the result of breaking down proteins into amino acids and some of that amino waste actually turns into urea. So urea is the nitrogenous waste that results from the breakdown of amino acids. That's basically what it is. Birds uh, produce it in the form of uric acid and a lot of aquatic organisms like fish actually produce it in the form of ammonia. For us, it's the least toxic in the form of urea and so that's the form that we produce and then we excrete it with our urine and then we mix up you know a little bit of water and there's some extra salts and things like that that we get rid of so why is this important here um, it turns out that urea although it's a biological product we can also synthesize it in a laboratory so as we can do this with all kinds of chemicals why is this a big deal because a long time ago there was this idea of the vital force and so this idea was called vitalism and it was a very important theory that was put forth basically saying that what makes something alive what makes something alive is that it has to carry this vital force it's a very mysterious thing but up until that point no one could really discredit this idea and the idea that anything that was living had to have a vital force therefore anything that was produced by a living organism in other words urea like the pee that comes out of the body because it's produced by a living organism it must also have a vital force but because people were able to synthesize this in a laboratory and it had the exact same chemical structure as the urea that comes out of a human or an animal body, this helped dis discredit this idea of a vital force. And so just the simple synthesis of a biological compound helped to move scientists and the world beyond this idea of a mysterious vital force. So. This is one aspect of the nature of science is that we can falsify theories when new evidence arises. So once again, this idea of the vital force running through everything living and anything that's produced by living things must also have this vital force. Uh, therefore, something that is not living cannot have this vital force. So when people were able to synthesize this urea in a laboratory, it really helped people to move beyond this idea of a vital force. And people had to come up with new definitions for what it actually means to be alive. So there you go, a little bit of nature of science to help you understand uh, how new theories can come about and how old theories can be updated.